If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. In this video, we are going to see something very interesting. We are going to explore MemLab. So MemLab is from Meta, formerly known as Facebook. You can use MemLab to find the memory leaks at scale. So we are going to see about MemLab and how we can use to find the uh, memory uh, leaks in your client side application. So what is MemLab? MemLab is an open source project recently got released from Meta. Basically it is a memory testing framework for JavaScript at scale. It uses a Puppeteer API under the hood, which we are going to see it in a moment. And using the MemLab, you can analyze your JavaScript heap snapshots. So basically, if you have something like a single page application, and if you want to find some memory leaks, definitely you can use the browser developer tools, but it is kind of a manual task and it needs some kind of expertise. And at scale, you cannot follow the same practice but using the MemLab, you can analyze your JavaScript heap snapshots pretty easily. And then you can integrate with your CACD pipeline. So basically this uh, MemLab will help you to aggregate your results. Uh, you can also debug the memory uh, objects. Basically it has a kind of an API where you can easily traverse the objects so that uh, you can find uh, what is causing the memory leak in your application. And also it comes with uh, a powerful CLI tool where you can uh, send some command and then it will automatically uh, do the stuffs for you. And also you can integrate the MemLab API in your code using the uh, memory assertions in Node.js. To get started with MemLab, all you need is a node. Just install uh, node and using the npm command install g memlab, you can easily install it in your local system. After that, you can just uh, trigger the memlab uh, space version. You can see the uh, detailed versions of each component. Okay, now let us see how memlab works. By understanding how it works, it will be very easy to understand your uh, heap snapshots and also about memlab so that you can uh, do things pretty fast. There are actually six steps involved in uh, memlab. But there are only three steps outlined in the uh, official documentation, but there are actually six. So we are going to see uh, each step one by one. The first step is browser interaction. So in this step, what you do is you write some simple script and you execute. So during the execution, what it will do is it will uh, first go to the baseline page, the home page. Memlab uh, take a snapshot, the memory snapshot. Then uh, the application will go to the uh, now it gets to the next page, basically whatever you want to click, it, it just clicks and then it will go to the page. Then it will uh, take another snapshot. So MemLab will take the second snapshot here. Then it will go to the, the previous page, basically the home page, the baseline page, then it will take another snapshot. So there are three snapshots will be captured by MemLab. Then what it will do is it will compare these snapshots. So not just comparison means not the file size and all, it do a lot of stuffs. So basically by comparing it, you can uh, easily see, okay, what's going on in each snapshot. So that is the second step. Then MemLab will refine the uh, captured snapshots based on the framework your application has, for example, Angular, or React, whatever it could be. So it, it does all kind of a cleanup, and then it will uh, keep it ready. Then it will generate the retainer traces. So basically it's an object map. Uh, if you are uh, not watching my performance engineer series for Java, you can just uh, touch base so that you can understand uh, what is memory leak and how it works. So similar approach also uh, here applies. So it will generate the retainer traces, basically the object map. Then it will do a clustering uh, mechanism. So clustering, uh, you can use machine learning or you can use some um, based on heuristics. So basically it will groups everything and then it will list out in the uh, console. The last step is reporting where you can uh, uh, create some report or you can uh, gen automate this uh, from uh, in CACD pipeline. So those things you can just take it to the next level. So these are the six steps involves uh, in MemLab uh, so that you can analyze your uh, JavaScript uh, memory uh, snapshot analysis. Okay, now let us see a quick uh, hello world thing. Uh, so here I have created some simple uh, test.js which we are going to run it in our uh, local machine. 
So here, as you see, uh, I'm defining a variable scenario. So inside scenario, I have three uh, things. One is the URL. So this is my academy.qainsights.com, which is the uh, baseline page. And the next step, what it'll do is once it launched the baseline page, it will capture the memory snapshot. Then it will go to the about page. So basically it will click the, click the uh, about page. So that is the target page. Then it will take another snapshot. Then it will go back to the uh, courses page, the final page. Then it will take another snapshot. So this is what it will do. If you run this script, this is what it will do by launching the browser. Uh, by default, it is Chrome. Okay, now let us see some of the commands uh, you will use to analyze your uh, snapshot. So first command is version. As you know, it will display all the version. Then uh, default work directory. So this is the default working directory where all your data will be stored. So by default in Linux, it will be a slash temp folder. Similarly for Windows, you can just uh, send the uh, command to get to know about your default location. To execute your script, you can use the uh, memlab run scenario and the file name. This is the headless mode. So by default, you don't see the UI. But if you want to see the UI when a uh, script is executing just for your debugging purpose, or if you want to know whether it is actually doing it or not, then you can pass the flag headful. So this will launch the browser. It will uh, do the actions. Then we have find leaks. So this will, uh, we will see it in the demo section, what it will do. And reset, it will delete, clean up everything. And if you want to warm up your server, you can use the warm up command. And if you want to run it in a different device, basically I want to run uh, uh, an iPad. I want to simulate the iPad thing. Basically it will change the user agent. Then it will simulate the iPad uh, user agent for you. And if you want to apply some machine learning, you can use the uh, ML clustering flag here. And uh, this is another uh, command where you can uh, take the snapshot. Uh, uh, basically everything I included just for your uh, learning purpose. Now let us uh, jump into the demo and let us see how memlab works. Okay, very first step is to install the memlab. You can uh, use the npm command to install memlab. So this machine, uh, I have already installed the memlab. So let us issue memlab uh, version. So this is the first command uh, you will execute just to make sure you are using the latest version of memlab. Now the next command is, uh, as you see in the right side, we have the git default work directory. So this is what you will do just to make sure uh, the location of your artifacts will be processed in here. If you want to do a cleanup, you can navigate to this uh, location and then you can just do your uh, cleanup. So now before we execute the uh, hello.js, uh, let me just uh, print the content of hello.js. So quickly, let us go through the uh, JavaScript file here. So as I mentioned, we have a scenario and we have the URL. This is our baseline page, line number two. And line number three, we have an action keyword. So this is what uh, it will do the actual action on your page. This is a reserved keyword. Uh, you cannot change it. So this is what you have to configure when you write your uh, JavaScript file. And here we are just clicking the uh, hyperlink, uh, which has the uh, slash about. So basically it will go to the about page. And then uh, again, the last step is to going back to the previous page by navigating to slash courses URL. So this is very simple, uh, hello.js, but of course you can uh, do a lot of things. For example, logging, and you can uh, read some tokens and some session. So you can do a lot of things, uh, but that is beyond the scope of this video. So now what we can do, let us execute uh, this command, memlab uh, run scenario uh, hello.js. Let me clear my screen and let me paste it here and hit enter. So this will run the scenario in a headless mode. So as you see here, uh, page load baseline S1, uh, action on page S2 and revert S3. So this is uh, some of the uh, naming conventions you can uh, uh, follow along with it and uh, it will start, it will contact the web server and then it will uh, do the action, it will take the snapshots. So you can see the progress here, but sometimes what will happen, it may fail. Whenever you write some script, say interaction fail or something, it will just terminate as is. That is because your page, your single page application, whatever you are doing in the uh, action, it should not refresh the page. So it is not for uh, any uh, a typical website where if you could navigate to any page, it will whole page will refresh, right? So you can do that. So this is only for single page application. So there should not be any 
uh, page refresh so make sure uh, you, uh, your application whatever you're testing uh, it is not doing that so now as you see here it is displaying the total time so it took around a minute uh, to execute all these steps and it is displaying some uh, uh, beautiful graph which is memory usage across all the steps and it has found three leaks and uh, these are the clusters so this is the headless mode okay now let me uh, send the flag uh, headful so now let us see what it will do so this will open the uh, browser then it will uh, uh, start clicking on the uh, link uh, meanwhile it will take the snapshots then it will go back to the page again to take a snapshot so you know the deal right so now let us wait for this execution to be completed then let us go back to the command line and see what it is displaying and now the execution is completed as you see here if you just scroll up again uh, the total time is 57.1 second and then memory usage across all the steps and it has found three leaks this is how memlab works so now it is time to understand uh, what i can do after uh, executing it so as a performance engineer what i'm supposed to do let us see that before that you have to definitely you must go through all the uh, documentations and the command uh, what it is doing uh, but i am on a high level i'll just give you some idea okay now let us just uh, go uh, to this particular page uh, the result so ba uh, so the baseline so the page load the snapshot of the uh, page load is 2.3 mb and action on page that snapshot is 2.7 mb so there is an increase in the uh, memory snapshot then on the final page as you see it is going little higher than the uh, page load which is 3.3 mb so basically definitely there is a memory leak because we are seeing uh, a difference between each snapshot so basically the objects are not clearing uh, once you go back to the final page or from the final page to the home page it should revert to the uh, the old uh, memory thing but it is not it is increasing that is what here also you are seeing so memory usage across all the steps there are three steps first step second step third step first step it is 2.3 uh, basically uh, the graph it's little uh, the units are little uh, not correct actually uh, 2.3 means it should be around here but you know the uh, just right here 2.3 first step second step 2.7 third one 3.3 .3. so definitely there is a memory leak we all know as you see here there are three leaks it has found so it is displaying there are three leaks happened in this particular run so now we will see one by one the first cluster so this is the first cluster so here as you see the similar leaks in this run is a 622 basically there are 622 objects caused the leak and the total retainer size of the uh, leaked objects is 133 kb so that is what uh, these two sentences mean to you and what objects these are the the traversing uh, objects so shortcut window starting from the window we have and we have an array and we have an element we have an element uh, div element detached html element internal node name node map etc and similarly the second cluster so i think i have to run it again let me just clear my screen and let us uh, run the uh, script again and then we can see the other clusters in detail now the execution has been completed now let us uh, go to the uh, second cluster so this is the second cluster so in the second cluster there are around 292 objects the total uh, retainer uh, size of the object is uh, 58 kb and the third cluster 237 objects 44.5 kb so as you see here the results are displaying it in the descending order of retained size of leaked objects so first is 125 58 and 44 so now if you see the second cluster as you see here it is going to the window this is the window and uh, these are the objects and so on and so on and if you just uh, go to the each object as you see and this is the page about page and again it has the 67.6 kb and so on and these are the some of the uh, objects of this particular uh, retainer trace okay now what we can do is if you have the knowledge of uh, uh, javascript definitely you can uh, find which object uh, is causing the issue or you can work closely with the uh, development team 
but one of the thing you can note down is the size suppose if you see the size say uh, like 8 mb or 10 mb or 3 mb or 2 mb whatever in mbs or if it is more uh, of any objects definitely there could be some uh, uh, high memory leak that is what my experience is i have seen in one of the uh, spa page and now let us see how we can apply the uh, ml clustering so by default uh, it will use as you see here it will use the its heuristics but i want to use the uh, machine learning so what you can do we can uh, copy this command and let us uh, paste it here and hit enter so this will use the machine learning clustering so now we will see how machine learning uh, clustering uh, displays for this particular uh, single page application Okay, now the uh, execution is completed as you see here again machine learning also it is displaying uh, three leaks and there are three clusters it's a very simple application so i don't see uh, much uh, difference between the heuristics or machine learning but in terms of like a facebook or whatsapp or uh, whatever very famous single page application out there definitely uh, it will be very helpful uh, if you change the algorithm uh, you can see uh, some uh, difference between the analysis okay now Next, what we can do is uh, let us uh, go to the temp folder. So TMP uh, memlab. And if you see here, uh, let me just display uh, tree view one. So there are three folders, Chrome, data, input. So now let us uh, uh, go to the uh, data folder. So here, as you see, uh, profile, persist, out, logger, uh, data builder and curve so if you go to the uh, curve folder as you see here uh, snapshots so this is your uh, snapshot captured by memlab and also you can see each screenshot also so this is the screenshot one two three let me open one of the screenshot here say uh, screenshot two so this is the screenshot two so this is how you can validate uh, your uh, images and also if you want to see your browser info console log leaks.txt uh, meta.json so all the data is available in this particular folder okay so now let us uh, do one more thing let me just go back to the uh, gits folder so whenever memlab uh, completes its analysis only displays the high confidence uh, memory leaks it will not display everything for you but in case if you want to see every memory leaks in your uh, snapshot then there is a flag you can use, which is uh, this one. So memlab find leaks trace all objects. So this will display everything for you from your snapshots. But this will be overwhelming. Sometimes uh, you don't know what to do with these analysis. As you see here, I, I, I'm just keep scrolling up. There are a lot of object traces here. And let me just go up here and uh, as you see here memlab found 58 leaks starting from this retainer size so this could be overwhelming sometimes it will not be very helpful so because there are 5000 plus traces are there so it, it might not be useful for you so that is why you need to uh, use the uh, default one but in case if you want to deep dive definitely you can uh, use this and uh, Facebook has built uh, some of the uh, some CACD thing uh, on top of the memlab, but it is not open source yet. It's uh, so only for internal purpose. But uh, they built a, a UI uh, where it will run automated uh, memlab analysis on the SPA, mainly Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, whatever the products, uh, public facing products. Then it will uh, display the comparison between the uh, each run. And then it will display some uh, uh, results. But memlab is a very good a starting point for your client side uh, performance engineering uh, definitely you can uh, improve this uh, definitely you can uh, find some regression defects uh, for your single page applications so this uh, is available uh, this script and the commands are available in the github repository so please check it out i will leave the link in the uh, description uh, thank you for watching happy testing if you like my dad's videos please subscribe to qa insights channel